630, so I will uh, just uh, start the Airdrie Community Board uh, meeting off um, for Airdrie. Um, welcome to everyone, um, and thank you for joining in, and also welcome to anyone who's new uh, to tonight's uh, Airdrie Community Board. Just a few points before I start, um, just to introduce myself. Um, I'm Michael McBride, and I'm Secretary of Cairn Hill Community Council in Airdrie, and also Chair of the Woodhall Fasking and Palace Creek Conservation Group, and uh, also Chair for tonight. Um, if someone's any just been late in joining, uh, there was a little message just at the start, just to remind us that uh, this has been uh, on live in the NLC YouTube, and if we could just remind ourselves of the term to mute um, while people are speaking, just to help us reduce any background noise. Thank you very much. Um, just moving on to the agenda. Um, point two, do we have any apologies from anyone? Chair, we have three apologies. We, we've um, we've received apologies from the young people who, who normally attend the meeting, from Nikki Miller and from Councillor Damasio. Okay, thank you, Justin. Any last minute apologies that anyone knows of? No, nope, okay, thank you. Um, point three on the agenda, uh, minutes of previous meeting and any matters arising. Anyone have any matters arising from the last minutes? Don't see anything on the sidebar. Um, I can't identify anyone that's making themselves known. No, okay. If we're happy, we'll move on from point three. Um, point four, which is the chair of community board arrangements. Any update on that, Christine? Yeah, Chair, um, that, that's on the agenda just to remind people that there's an opportunity. Obviously, if anybody wants to have have the opportunity to chair the meeting from a community group or organisation, they've got the opportunity to do that. And obviously, in a, a, a kind of shared basis with your, yourself, Chair. Yeah. Um, if anybody's interested, please let us know by um, um, contacting us through the Community Matters email address. Um, but the opportunity is there, even if it's in a shared basis. If you're, you're interested in doing that, please let us know. Thanks very much. Thank you, Kristen. Yes, and just to echo that, um, I know I've done chair a few times on this, and um, anyone's welcome to um, take turn at doing chair. And if you know anyone interested, as Kristen says, please let us know. Uh, that'd be very welcome. Um, Nancy, did you have your hand up there? Yes, please, Michael. Just to check, remember uh, the gentleman from the fire brigade and uh, the lady from, was it Craig Newk? Community Council, Sharon Craig. And I don't know what the gentleman's name was. He was an officer in the fire brigade. Are they not doing it now? There's someone on from the fire brigade just now, Nancy. Um, I don't know if I can't see Sharon on. If anyone can see her, I can't just no. now. Chair, if I, if you don't mind, I, I could maybe answer that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I know the the three names were put forward at the very first meeting. Um, we're, we've made an attempt to contact um Sharon to see if she's still interested in being involved. And obviously, the opportunity is there if she wa she wants to do that. Um, but we're we're waiting for people to come back to us. Um, if they are still interested, then we will certainly kind of speak to them and and we would look at sharing that on on a um on a shared basis over the course of the next number of meetings. Sorry, I thought that's what it was when we, mm -hmm. we started off the meetings, that the three people, yourself, Michael, and the other two, um, were deciding who's going to chair kick off first, more or less. Um, but I know that the gentleman for the fire brigade, that he was quite interested as well. So just see where you go with here. Just on that, um, I know the fire service has now changed. 
there, there's been a change in, in staff and, and we've got David now, so that, that person's moved on in terms of that. Um, but certainly um, we have got in contact with the other person um, and asked them if they're still interested in being involved and we would look to, to pursue that. Chair, can I come in just a wee second there, Matt yeah, Castello? Yeah. Yeah. Just to clarify, in terms of as much as we welcome the the interest from fire and rescue at the start of the process, um, we did consider that it was more more appropriate for the for the involvement in maybe a subgroup in relation to community safety rather than chairing the board. We we're hoping that the board chair would come from a community organisation rather than a community planning partner on that basis. So that's where we would welcome input from any community groups in that. And Christine will continue to to, to liaise with Sharon um, regarding her role as well. Okay, thank you. Liz. Does that cover your question answer? That's fine, Michael. Okay, thank you. Moving on to the main heading, General Community Board Business and Updates, and point five, which is Head of Service Community Champions. Thanks, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I'll take this opportunity to introduce myself. Um, I'm Brian Lafferty. I'm the Head of Housing Property Projects for North Lancashire Council. <clears throat> and, um, I'm being um, nominated as the Community Champion for the Edry uh, Community Board. Um, well, time will tell if it's a short straw or not, or you guys have got the short straw rather than me. Um, so I've prepared a week and a a wee kind of intro to, to, to my thoughts and processes and what we've been working on in the background as a council and as heads of service. So if you just bear with me, I'll, I'll take you through that. So um, so I think everybody agrees that local communities should be at the heart of the public service delivery. Um, and the introduction of the Community Empowerment Act puts the, this into a legislative footing. <coughs> the response to this within the council was to create a North Lanarkshire partnership and probably more importantly, the creation of nine community boards across the area. The purpose of the boards has been discussed in detail with everyone in the group and other groups, and it's not my intention to go into it because you guys know a lot more than me about all, but rather to say that following the creation of the boards, there was a lot of realisation within the council there needed to be a more direct relationship between the council's corporate management team and the communities that it served. And the purpose behind this was um, to ensure that the overall corporate direction of the council and the plan for North, La North Lanarkshire was and continues to be aligned to the overall needs of the communities. Not a guarantee that we'll agree on everything, but certainly both are incorporated in the overall decision making process. Also need to be a, a, it's also need to be a long term commitment to the work of the council's communities team who have done a fantastic job over the last couple of years getting us to the stage we currently are with the creation of the boards and soon to be signed off lights, both improvement and compliance. Uh, and the way in which the council has partnered to deliver community service has to change. Although the budget setting process has been painful the last few years, um, hopefully it will not be as painful in the next few years. Uh, but I think everybody expects and agrees that the funding for the NHS and the education is something that has to be protected at all costs. And there's a lot of argument around that. But this always leaves an inevitable overall reduction for the rest of the public purse and the, the earliest frontline services. And I think we also know that at some point in the very near future, we'll have to pay for the pandemic. Um, so we're getting a, a, maybe a couple of years down the line, but we're getting at least a, a couple of years warning that it's coming. And we have this time to maybe look at a different approach in the way we deliver things. <laughs> one that puts the local communities at the heart of service delivery and one that makes best use and achieves the greatest impact with the reduced public resource that we have and ultimately leads to an overall improvement in local communities. But in order to achieve this, both communities and the public agencies have to work together as a collaborative, as one can be successful without the other. And if we don't work as a collective, then we'll both fail. Um, the question for the council was then, how could it best deliver this and what was it agreed? That was firstly there would be a restructure in the council's overall corporate management team. This has recently been completed, and the new CMT meets every fortnight, and all the heads of service attend that. Um, this will then provide the direct interface between the council's management team and the local communities. It also determined that the nine heads of service who will be assigned as community champions allocated to these nine boards. As I mentioned previously, this is a new approach. And it's not a short term strategy. We know that changes outlined in the plan for North Lanarkshire and indeed those contained within the life for long term objectives. So it was also agreed that the heads of service will remain in place for a period of three years, with the review being taken around 30 months. The purpose of this is so that a growing and hopefully positive relationship can be built between the heads of services and other members of the board. And also that heads of services allowed the time to build an understanding of the issues that are common across all communities. And more importantly, that there's a need to the board that they represent. Unfortunately, perhaps, Airdrie, it's me who's been allocated as a community champion to this board. 
Part of the state this day is that the exact definition of the role of community champion is still being developed, and a report on the outline will be delivered to North Lanarkshire Partnership in July sometime. And we've been maintaining to circular support to all board members, and at the same time, ask you guys for your comments as to what you expect from myself in such a role. As the final report outlining the community champions will be scheduled to go back to the council's corporate management team for the end of September. I've got one thoughts on at present. I can tell you what the role is, not but it's not about someone who will be a point of contact to every, every any, to report any specific issues. The bins not being emptied, grass not being cut. But I think the community champion will be someone who will work with both the board, the corporate management team, and the community team to see how we can best deliver as a collective on the key themes which have been outlined in the loop. We'll also be about speaking to other heads of service to determine what's working well in other areas and how we can transform or trans translate us into our own thinking. So, on that note, I think I'll stop. And um, if you're okay with this, Chair, I'll arrange for that copy of the, the board, the, the report to come to the, the NLP board as soon as it's been circulated. And if I could ask for any comments to fed back to myself um, as a community champion before the end of July. And I'm hoping, happy to go to the trust centre and the one more engagement to the people which then passes by and they can contact me directly. So, that, that's me had my uh, spiel. I hope that was informative. Future. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Um, that's very useful. Um, is there any um, quick questions from anyone to Brian? I know he's asking for maybe direct questions to him himself. If there's anything uh, specific, I'm not going to see anyone making any acknowledgement. Oh, yeah, I think there's one. Is that Tom Morgan putting his hand up? No. 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 Sorry, I thought somebody was putting their hand up there. I think Samina put her hand up, Chair. Oh, sorry, Samina, did you have your hand up? <clears throat> yeah, I did. Oh, sorry, sorry. My question is with the, is a council, yeah? Yes, a, yeah, question, yeah, uh-huh. Right. It's, um, it's about the education about kids. Just to ensure that uh, in the future, no matter what comes, what virus come, or what disease comes to UK, then the council should not uh, allow our kids to miss their schools, because I'm concerning about my own grandchildren. They have missed their exams, and this means they will never get the chance to uh, to go to the hires. You know, sit for hires. If we cannot, if we can't, can't let this happen again, and we should let the, the children. Uh, continue their uh, education. This is my concern is about the kids. Thank you, Samina. Brian, can you cover that point at all? Yeah, but I'll, I'll, give my, I'll try a bit. So, um, the council have been working very hard and they've been following local, uh, national and local government guidance on the building, the closing the schools, and, and they're working very hard to, to, to improve uh, the education of the kids and to improve digital classrooms and uh, all, all the tools in the box to make sure this doesn't harm in the future. And to minimise the disruption to the kids in the school because nobody knows more than the education department and the council the importance of the, the children's education. So I can assure you the council are working really hard to make sure after the disruption going forward and make it as painful and as easy as possible for the kids to continue their learning. Thank you, Brian. Does that cover your question, Samina? Look, I see last year, last time that they they only considered their prelims. They didn't start on the exams. So we don't want this happened again. To the kids, I think that the, the Scottish government and the education bodies they, they did determine the the the, um, the plan of the education the exams. Uh, I'm, I'm not really know the answer to that one, but I will ask a question and I'll try and get back to you um, right. on what would happen in the future if um, there's right. a future. I'm asking you, whatever is happening, happen. any exams get cancelled. I'll take it. Okay, back. thank you, Brian. Thank, thanks, Samina. Thank you. Any other questions for Brian? Chair, there's a uh, Councillor McNeil. Councillor McNeil's asked to comment. Oh yeah, Chair. Sorry, Councillor McNeil. Yeah, carry on. I just wanted to make the point, Michael, that uh, <clears throat> North Lancashire Council have got to follow whatever the Scottish Government guidance is <clears throat> when it comes to anything to do with the pandemic. So it's the Scottish Government that make these decisions rather than the Council. Okay, thank you, Councillor. That's what I was saying, Chair, and the, the Council will do their best. They've been led by the local and national governments, and, and I'm going to the county to minimise any future disruption in the children's education. Thank you. Councillor Morgan, do you want to come in as well? 
Give me the comment and sidebar. Can't hear you, Tommy. My apologies. Yeah. Yeah. Albeit I missed the last meeting and possibly any discussion that took place prior to this. Could you just clarify, or can Brian just clarify his position vis-a-vis -vis or in relationship? I see Leanne Pollock is on screen here from Community Empowerment. And I'm, t I'm trying to pick up on what Brian has said there. I think it's a, it's, it's a truism that we know there's going to be a bill for COVID. So it's going to be very difficult for anybody that's going to be seen as a community champion delivering things. We're going to be looking to deliver fresh air when the bills for all this comes in. So there's going to be one hell of a tsunami of kickback. Possible closures. I'm not uh, causing any alarm there, but facilities will have to be looked at. Budget proposals are being looked at over the summer. The bills will come in. So rather than being seen as being left with a, a poison chalice, what is going to be the relationship between, Brian mentioned, nine community champions there? And who's going to oversee that? Is there going to be a role for community empowerment that Leanne represents here? Where's going to, going to be the crossover between departments? Because I don't think you need to be um, Nostradamus to see that there's going to be financial difficulties around the corner. And rather than being presented with opportunities, it will be fighting to retain services that will be the issue here. So how is that collusion and joint approach or more than one department approach going to take place in relation to this item? So I'll, I'll try and best answer that. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. Um, right, the, the, the nine community boards, as you're probably are aware, Councillor Morgan and each, each of them has now got a head of service uh, as a community champion. Uh, we're all supported by the Anne and Matt team, and we all, we all get together and we'll be talking about best practice. And as you mentioned, there will be challenges going forward, and it's about how best to make sure Lanarkshire um, minimises those. <laughs> will still be in the profile. They'll, they'll, they'll sit in the background supporting us and we keep them because at the end of the day, they, they're the experts. I mean, we're, as I say, the, my, my kind of opening my uh, address. This is, this is new. It's most of these heads of service and we're, we're going to have to learn to go through this. But our job is to be act as a conduit between the community board and the, 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 the corporate management team to make sure the council does what it can to support the community in its needs. We are not sure if to that. Okay, thank you, Brian. Councillor Mogg, does that cover your point? I suppose, Chair, we could elongate discussion and not really get the, the exact or any exactitude out of it. The truth will be in the pudding as we go through time here. I understand what Brian's saying there is there is a, he's playing a, a role of conduit between one tier and another tier. The reality will be that when we're presented with the financial bills and we start looking at budgets, um, and I'll, that, no doubt, will, will, will be sooner, unfortunately, rather than later. And everybody's role will then be clarified, and possibly the cross-referencing will become a bit more um, transparent and obvious than it. It seems to be rather nebulous at present. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. If anyone's got no other questions, we'll finish off with that. Chair, before you move on, can I just quickly make some reference to the sound? There seems to be some people highlighting they've got issues with sound. It seems to be the, the, the issue, I've checked it that the sound's going out on the YouTube channel and the, the sound within most of the people on the call. So maybe some people maybe have to check their own devices to see if there's any issues in, in the particular devices. But there doesn't seem to be any um, particular issues for in, for in a general sense for the Webex. Okay, thank you. I was just going to mention that. Thanks, Max. We'll move to the next one. Okay, um, thank you. Point six, um, flexible funding report. Someone picking that up. Thank That's you. me, Chair. Thanks, yeah. Mark Castillo. Um, this report that was issued with the papers um, it provides information relating to the flexible fund and the tackling insecurity funding streams, which have been allocated for local initiatives in North Lanarkshire. This fund is intended to support individuals and communities impacted during the COVID-19 pandemic. It's just to ask the community board to note the funding arrangements that have been implemented and that further information will be made available to the board as required going forward. The report details the areas where additional funding has been made available. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you. Any questions for that point to Mark? 
from anyone? Chair Ian McKindle has his has his hand up on the screen. I'm not sure oh. if it's it's been up for a while. All right, I can see that now. Ian, sorry, apologies. Do you want to come in on this question or was it a previous one? Ian, can you hear me okay? Ian McKindle? Ian was saying the problems with sound, Chair. I just I don't know where he just put that hand up when he's been okay. on the screen. Okay, thank you. Um, just again, any questions for that point from Mark? Board Member Owen? No, okay. Um, just on to point seven, which is community partnership updates, um, section one board development sessions. That's me again, Chair. Thanks. Um, this, this report, uh, this input, is just to highlight at the stage the board members are critical in achieving the, the outcomes of the community boards as effectively as possible. Just linking into what, what Brian was talking about in relation to the role of the community champions. We want to make sure that we work together in a very positive way um, going forward to try and make the boards a successful model for leading on recovery and delivering on the plan for North Lanarkshire. In the board development sessions, we want to cover a number of different areas. And if anyone's interested in a system of this, we'll, we'll, we'll give you some more information on that. In a, in a minute or so. Some development areas have been identified already um, for, for discussion at the board development sessions. This includes, for example, community engagement, general partnership working, the role of the chair or the role of the, the community board member, participating in the budgeting, the local development programme, partner budgets, not just the council budgets, but other partners such as NHS Lanarkshire, the Fire and Rescue, Police Scotland, um, for example, community asset transfer, local health strategies and community safety. These are some, some key areas that have been identified. But what we need to do now and to take this forward is to agree the initial areas of, for development as part of the board development sessions. And as I say, these are just some examples. But we're looking to see if anybody's got any other ideas that they want to be considered for the board development sessions going forward. And we're looking for a representative from the community in the board to be part of a, a very short life group that will determine the best approaches to devise the new the new approach to, to the board development sessions, to devise a questionnaire that will be sent out to all, all board members. And this will allow us to identify common themes for inclusion, but also importantly, preferred learning methods, which will be taken into account and hopefully come with, up with a, a blended approach that will look at online interactive approaches and more traditional methods of, 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 of learning. So we'll look at the feedback on that over the next few weeks. Um, if anybody's interested in that, you can let us know if you want to be part of that group and help us to take forward the development of the board development sessions that will hopefully be launched in the autumn um, and you can get as many people involved in that as possible, Chair. But I'm happy to take, to take any questions or points. Okay, thank you, Mark. Just before I move on to questions, can I just um, remind everyone, I think there's a little bit of background noise in someone's microphone. Um, it sounds like a TV or a radio. I could be wrong. Um, so if you're maybe not, um, if you're maybe not going to ask questions, if you go mute, please, if you could. Thank you. Um, any questions to Matt on the board development session? Councillor Beveridge, did you have your hand up there or? No, no. Okay, thank you. Um, section two on point seven, which is local development programme. That's myself again, Chair. Okay. Um, just in this report, again, our report was issued with the papers last week. This report provides a, a an update on the, the, the projects in the local development programme. There was only one project that required completion for the last financial year, but it provides an update on the, the future capital budgetary position for the local development programme, as we promised at the last cycle of boards. And you can see for Airdrie, um, this financial year will be allocated just over £300,000 for local development programme projects to be taken forward in, in the, the local area. On the other side of that, in the terms of the holding list we have at the moment, 
there's roughly about half a million pounds worth of projects based on indicative estimates of projects um, for that. So it's not something we're going to be able to deliver in one year, but as, as the appendix shows in the report, we have got five years capital funding being allocated to the, the local development programme. So we're confident that we'll be able to deliver um, a, a large number of the projects that the, the board is looking to take forward. So what we want to do next is to, to, to look at the potential projects we have, identify the feasibility of the projects that have been approved in principle by the boards and take them forward where we can, where we possibly can and towards delivery. These, pro as I said earlier, the budget's given the, the budget um, and the number of projects that are there. We won't be able to do them all, so we've done over more than one financial year. We'll ensure the community board is kept informed of the projects and how these are progressing as time goes on. Um, and we'll prioritise the projects on the basis of wide community support and links to the local outcome improvement plan. And also that it can be delivered within reasonable budgets following the feasibility assessments. We'll also look to support projects that can tie into external funding applications to try and maximise the amount of money that can be delivered in local areas and maximising uh, budget streams. Just one other point to, to, to note is that the formula used to distribute the funds, as you can see, um, is based on two, two areas. One is based on population um, of, of, the, of the, the board area, and the other is based on the SI. MD, which is the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation. So there's, there's money given for based on population, but also based on poverty levels within the area. And that's how it came to the, the amount that was allocated to Airdrie. So just to, um, to, to the, the board to, to note that report, Chair, and that we will we'll feedback further in relation to projects as they develop. OK, thank you, Mark. Um, do you also want to cover Section 3, or is that something else, or before we move on to questions? I think that's everything we've got just now, Chair. OK. Any questions for Mark? Yeah. Sorry, I can't see who that is. Somebody got their hand up. Councillor, Councillor Ian McNeill. Okay, yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry. I don't, know, I don't know if this will be the right time or not to raise this, so I'll raise it at the moment, and if you, if it's not, I'll, I'll come back to it later. Uh, I've been approached by the Parent Council at St Dominic's Primary School in Petersburn, because, as everyone will probably be, probably be aware, that school burnt down uh, and had to be replaced. And it's been replaced. It's an excellent facility. The school's are absolutely great. However, there's not really any adequate uh, outside resource for the children. And uh, in my discussions with the, the school board and fund that I was going to raise it here this evening, uh, what I would suggest is that there's an area of land immediately behind the school, which uh, is a wee play park that the Petersburg Development Trust, I think, funded in the past before they folded and they handed some money back to the council. So what I'm proposing is that uh, a community group is formed up in Petersburg where who is supplying a synthetic pitch, an area that can be used by the kids uh, when when it's uh, during the school school hours where required if they require to use it and can be used by the community when it's not getting used by the school. Now, I think this would be a classic uh, case that we should be able to achieve outside funding for this because Petersburg and Craig Newt, as everybody's aware, uh, is an area of deprivation and it's, it requires to have some decent facilities. So that's a proposal that I hope to take forward. I've already approached two or three people. We have view to get them involved in it. Uh, so uh, that's something I would like to see going forward. And Adi, please, Matt. OK, thank you, Councillor Neil. Matt, do you want to come back on that? Uh, we, can, we can certainly look into having discussions with local community groups, elected members on, on that chair to see how we can, we can best support that. OK, thank you. Um, Alan, thank you Councillor, Councillor Bevage, did you want to come in? I think you made a note on the sidebar. I think Michael was, Councillor Coyle was coming in first. Carry on, Michael. Always oh. refer to my elders. <laughs> Sorry, Councillor Thanks very Coyle much, Alan. Thanks very much, Alan. I value your respect. Thanks, Chair, for letting me in. I totally agree with Councillor McNeil. It's a question that I was going to ask uh, Matt there as well about this uh, £300,000 funding. Would that be available some yet for this uh, you? For this new development trust that Councillor McNeil and me is trying to set up, 
because uh, I believe that there's about twenty thousand pound still lying uh, dormant in that, and that would be a great start if we could get match funding in that. That's a kind of question I'd like to ask uh, Matt, if that's possible. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Councillor Coyle. Matt. Yeah, as I said, Chair, more than happy to 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 meet with the elected members in the local group to see what's possible, what's feasible for delivery in 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 the area, and to determine what the opportunities are. And as I said, we're always very keen to maximise opportunities for external funding, and um, through the variety of sources that are available there. So I'm happy to sit down and be part of that group that's looking at that. Okay, thank you. Any last minute questions on that point? Uh, Michael, can I just can I just come yeah. in there? Uh, just remember that there's a a crying facility just across the road from St Dominic's just now, and I presume that working group will be looking at the feasibility of using the the existing synthetic park that's sitting there uh, adjacent to the the football ground, because it's obviously during the day it'll not be be used very often, I would imagine. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Michael. Councillor Martin, okay. You recognise my plane's accent, Michael, thank you. <laughs> um, Michael, can I say as a success story in that, and listening to what Ian and um, Michael Coyle are proposing up at the uh, the Petersburn site, at the Craig Nuke site, can I say that um, a project that I just passed recently myself because of the COVID close down did not get the coverage uh, of the effort that was put in by the department, I and mean, we were remiss of being not to. We're always uh, in, uh, first in the queue to complain, but when things are delivered, sometimes we're last in the queue to recognise that. There's an excellent project over there, just down behind the old DL Bakery site, which consisted of one swing for about 50, 40 or 50 years. I've been taking a walk past it recently. Can I commend the department and Christine and all others? They got together with Chapelside Primary, St. Sears Primary, and you can see the development that's up there. And now that might be a, a smaller site than is being proposed at Craig Nuke. But can I put a marker down that when COVID restrictions allow, I know that she did excellent work in consultation with the kids at both schools. Can we make sure that that's diarised somewhere in the agenda so that the kids' input are recognised when it's allowed for? To get some form of official opening of that up there. Uh, well, okay. sorry, sorry, along Trashbush Road at the DL Bakery site. Both schools they put a lot of effort in, as well as the department did. So I think we should, uh, when, when time allows, we should give the kids the recognition of the hard work they put in. Okay, thank you, Councillor Morgan. Okay, moving on. If no one else is coming in, um, there's a a, a one. Point section here of an update. Chair, um... is, is that the update for the local outcome improvement plan? Yes. Yeah, that that will be myself and and Leanne okay. if if she wants to kind of contribute to that as well. What what I wanted to say first of all was um, thanks to all of the all of the people from this board, all the members of the board who were able to take part in the subgroup meetings um, that that took place over a period of time, and also to to the members of the board who were able to attend the special community board meeting to discuss the local outcome improvement plan um, that took place not so long ago. Um, I just wanted to kind of give a a, a brief kind of up update of the process of the local outcome improvement plan um, within the Airdrie area, um, because I know that there's some newer people on, on the, the, the meeting tonight as well. So, so for their benefit, because I know the people that were involved in it are, are well aware of, of the kind of process. But just to give an, a, an example, what happened initially was that in phase one of the process, um, there was a mapping of council services and partner priorities. Phase two and three of the process involves stakeholder engagements, listening events, wider community surveys, and, and engagement with seldom heard voices. Phase four is, is the most recent phase of, of the, the process that's taking place. 
we pulled together, and when I say we, there, there's been a variety of people have been involved in this. Um, there was a triangulation exercise, and what that means is we gathered all of the evidence that's come from all those engagement processes that I mentioned previously, pulled all of that together, and looked at um, what that evidence was telling us. What were the kind of priorities that were coming through that, um, and what were the kind of key themes that were coming through? Now, the previous board meeting, um, it was agreed that the priorities. Uh, that were, were coming through were the ones that we would focus on. Um, the subgroups then met um, on several occasions, as I mentioned there, to work in draft actions that would address the priorities that had been identified and agreed by the board previously. We circulated those draft actions that were pulled together um, to, to the full board, and you'll, you'll all have had copies of those prior to the special board meeting. The special board meeting, it was agreed that the, the actions that were identified uh, would address the priorities that had been identified through the engagement processes. So really what I'm asking tonight is that um, can we formally, now we've had the special board meeting, can we formally endorse those action plans so that we can then take it to the next stage where we'll, we'll look to pull together the report that will be published, um, but we really need the board to endorse um, the actions that came through that, the, um, the engagement processes. Thanks very much, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, you did mention the Andy Lee. I want to come in before we went further with that. Um, I don't really have much to add to, to what um, Christine has said, just to kind of reiterate that the next stages um, are really about. I suppose the next stage is when we really get to work in terms of how do we deliver on these priorities, how do we support communities to deliver these priorities. Um, and as, as Christine said, there's been great uh, participation across the nine areas, and particularly in particular um, for people um, con contributing to the development of the priorities. So the next stage for us is really just to get some design work done on the main documents, get them published, and then start some work between now and the next community board to just really refine how, how each of the different priorities will be supported through community uh, board subgroups or other kind of structures within areas. So that's really the kind of next steps and, and stages for us um, and really looking at, you know, how as a partnership we support and work with communities to be able to lead around delivering some of these priorities. That was all I would have said, but I think Christine covered most of that. Okay, thank you, Lily and, and Christine. Um, as Christine has said, is the, is the board happy to move this forward? Yep, thumbs up from Councillor Stock. Yeah. Seem to be okay with that. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, does that cover point two on the support subgroups, Christian and Leanne, or is that a separate point we want to mention? Um, ju just this, the subgroups obviously will be linked um, to the um, the priorities. So um, the ones that the kind of priorities that came through were things like mental health. There was COVID recovery. There was COVID response. Um, there there was poverty and things like that as well. So there will be subgroups linked to that. But as Leanne said, we'll look at that now to see how we'll kind of pull that together. But I know some people were putting other other things forward in terms of subgroups. So we're happy to kind of take those on board as well. So if there's if there's any other kind of potential areas that people feel that they would like to look at in terms of a subgroup, then please let us know. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, if we move on to point eight, which is petitions, um, Christine, is that from yourself anything to come from that? There's no positions, uh, petitions, sorry, um, presented for this board meeting, Chair. Okay, thank you. Moving on to point nine, that's going to Mark first before we continue. Thanks, Chair. This is just relating to the issues that have came through community matters regarding the Airdrie Health Centre and the scaffolding surrounding the Airdrie Health Centre has been brought up as an issue um, on a few occasions um, about some access, etc., and some problems that people have had around there. Um, I've, we said we put this on the agenda for some further discussions tonight, Chair. Um, so it's just to see if there's any input that's from the, the local community in relation to that. Okay, thank you, Matt. Anyone want to comment on that about your health centre scaffolding? Councillor Stocks and then Councillor Pettigrew. Great, thanks. Thanks, Chair. Um, this is something that, as we all know, has been going on uh, since before lockdown, the first lockdown. Uh, 
15 months ago and uh, it's been raised before at these meetings and it seems to be an issue that the the health board haven't to come up with a solution as far as i know unless there's someone there tonight that can enlighten us uh, because um although it's it's a bit easier to take along the pavement there as it was last year um it's still it still shouldn't be there. It's going on too long, and I can't understand why it's it's still there. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Stocks. I'll pass on to Nancy before I take in someone else. Councillor Pettigrew next, and then I'll take. Sorry, I don't know your name. I've seen your hand up, but Councillor Pettigrew next. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Uh, just uh, as. David said there, we spoke last year regarding that because it was highly dangerous. And I was made aware of elderly people trying to walk along that pavement. Um, they were, I think, who to call the manager of the health centre? Duffy. Um, and he said that he would get it looked at. But as what he said there, it's still, uh, I mean, it's a lot better than what it was. Um, but uh, you know it's crazy that it's still standing there at this time. What is it they're doing? Because I haven't seen anybody working on it. Okay, Thanks. thank you, Councillor Petsgrew. I'll come on to the the gentleman who's got his hand up, and then I'll come on to Councillor McNeil, who's made a comment on the bar. Carry on, sir. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to introduce myself, my name's Paul Goodship. I'm the interim locality social work manager for Airdrie. I'm representing the partnership. Yeah, and thank you for having me on. It's my first time here. Um, I do yeah. have an up update from from the, the health partnership from NHS Lanarkshire, which I, I can share with you, and also take back any any comment which which is appropriate. So, um, uh, obviously, you're aware that the um, that the health centre a problem with the cladding uh, occurred just before the lockdown, um, and this this led to a delay in the ability for the contractors to actually attend the site and to investigate the root cause of the failure. Um, as a result, the scaffold was erected around the perimeter um, as a precautionary measure, um, and the recommendation is that that remains in place because of the risk of of falling cladding. Um, so, for the safety of of, of the public, um, it's recommended it remains. Um, NHS Lanarkshire, in regular correspondence with a contractor um, regarding this defect, and and pressure is being placed on 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 the responsible contractor to identify a solution. Um, it's anticipated that we will reach an agreement on the way forward in the next few months um, to enable work to start to begin to rectify the defect and allow the scaffolding to be removed. Um, of course, this requires the cooperation of all parties involved. But um, uh, please be, be assured that NHS Lanarkshire uh, um, uh, are doing all they can to, to ensure that this matter is moved forward as quickly as possible uh, and that we'll take whatever action is necessary to, to ensure that happens. Thank you, Paul, for that update. Councillor Stocks, Councillor Petigrew, does that cover your questions? Now, I'll come on to Councillor McNeil. Well, can I, can I say, Chair, uh, that, yeah, it, it answers it to a point, but uh, I think it's been a long time looking, for, and, and I've got to say, Paul, Paul's always a great help to local councillors, and uh, I've got to say, it's been a long time coming looking for a solution for it, so hopefully it is quite soon anyway. Thank you. Okay. Councillor McNeil, did you want to come in? Yes, I do want to come in. Uh, Paul, this is not me having a go at you here, so please uh, don't think it is. However, I think what you've just said is completely unacceptable. I think it's been there for far too long. The inaction, the fact it's been there for a year and a half, I've had uh, numerous complaints about it, so I didn't have a wee look at it myself. The way it's set up, there's, no, there's not even a metre for people to get through. It's completely against the COVID regulations that people are having to pass each other right next to each other and probably touching each other going through that scaffolding. It needs a complete redesign and it should be done as quickly as possible, in my opinion. I just think NHS Lanarkshire are badly out of step here and it needs to be sorted and quickly. Thank you. I'm I'm happy to, to feed that back. Um, I'm aware that it does create a bottleneck and it does... Um, it does create inconvenience, and I'm, I'm very sorry about that. I, I will feed your, your comments back, Councillor McNeil. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Paul. Any other questions on the staff at the Health Centre? We'll move on. Right, 
No. Okay. Um, we're now coming on to the section of community matters. Um, point 10 is input from local community groups um, and agenda items from uh, community groups. Um, we have two points on it. Um, the first point um, I will be covering um, since it's obviously coming from KNL Community Council. Um, so if you bear with me, I'll give you a quick update on this proposal for um, the local development programme. Um, as you know, I'm the, the Secretary of Kennel Community Council and I've been speaking to um, obviously the, um, the, the members of Kennel Community Council regarding some local projects that we'd like to see happening. Um, and there's three uh, projects we would like to propose. Um, and if what some people know is the area of Cairn Hill, um, the first proposal is the small piece of green land, which is between the Pilgrim Church and Arthur Avenue, which is on Cairn Hill Road. Um, it currently has a couple of small benches, a lot of green area, trees, etc., etc. Um, what we would like to do is we'd like to get a full regeneration of the area to improve the appearance, to improve the appearance. Um, the tree and garden area to be all cut back and tidied, not trees cut down, just all tidied up. Um, we would also like to have a new larger pathway, which would have accessibility um, for wheelchair access and people with some disabilities, um, maybe people who have disabilities with walking, etc. Um, also, uh, some new flowers and pollen flowers um, planted, um, a new litter bin and dog bin. Um, and although there is two seats currently there, we would like to move them forward um, to more of the, the Cairn Hill footpath. Um, and this would cover easy access to people who are walking and can actually sit down more easily. Um, that being a way at the back of the, the land. Um, and that also covers, um, I'm sure maybe some of you are aware of this, but it would also cover the similar mission of Living Streets, um, which I believe they've done some work up in Peterburn um, at the Robin Gardens. Um, I think a few people in this have been involved with that. Um, and also have some local involvement with the primary school to be involved with maybe, say, planting um, some fleas and uh, some flowers. Um, and just basically to fully include and fully improve the appearance of the area. Um, the second proposal um, is within um, the Cairn Hill area. Um, it's within Faskin Avenue, Faskin Crescent. There's a small grass area. Um, again, we would just look for some small regeneration to take the old um, trees out and retain the grass, but just sort of make the appearance much better. Um, and again, some new planting and just basically improved appearance for the community. The third proposal is on Thompson Drive, Stroke Woodburn Avenue. Um, if people know it's where the post box is. Again, it's just to improve that pathway. There's also a pathway on that section. Um, and again, just to regenerate the, the area to make it more um, a better appearance for the local area. Um, also retaining the grass and just trimming back some of the trees. Um, they are the, the three proposals which we put forward to the Community Council board members. Um, I've been chatting in the last maybe three months and um, came up with some ideas, and these are the three that we've come up with. Um, and I think finally, just to sort of uh, on conclusion, um, we believe the proposal is quite crucial um, to the place for local people to utilise, especially once we get out of COVID 19 and lockdown restrictions. People will be looking for more. Um, outdoor space, a little bit more relaxation. Um, and I think, especially as many people know around this area, there's quite a lot of elderly people. And we have a sheltered home just behind the proposal one on Cairn Hill Road. And some of those residents um, have some disabilities or wheelchairs or walking frames. And um, I think that'd be a very useful um, area to regenerate. Um, and similar to both proposal two and three, it's just really to make it more accessible and a nicer area for um, to to make it uh, a little bit better in regeneration styles. Um, so that's our three proposals we want to put to the board. Um, so obviously, um, Matt, I'll leave that with um, yourselves, and obviously we can decide either tonight or later on at another uh, meeting. Thank you.
Thanks, uh, Chair. If I could just come in briefly on that that point, I mean, you'll you see from the local development program that there, that this is something that has been raised before in relation to some investments in that area that have been approved in principle by the board in the past. So we're happy to to look to to work with the group to see what we can we can do. Obviously, you're talking about three separate projects there, and then back again, it might not be something that's delivered in one financial year, but we can certainly look to see how we can phase that. Uh, into the work we're doing, following a uh, further consultation with the local community, etc. But if the, the board's happy for us to progress with that, we can certainly have further discussions with your your organisation. Okay, thank you. I'll move on to number two, which is a request for update regarding facilities. Um, Nikki Miller. Chair, unfortunately, Nikki's not been able to come along to the meeting okay. tonight. Um, we can make sure that, that Nicky receives some feedback on on that request, or if he wants to bring it to a future board, um, okay. we, we can do that. Okay, thank you. Um, point 11, input from community planning partners. Um, Chair, just before you proceed, oh, so the, so the, there was a third one on your the, uh, uh, kind of later agenda that was sent to you um, for, for input from Evelyn Anderson from the CAB. All right, okay, I must have missed that. I do apologise. Yeah, carry on is someone. Hi, hi. Um, my name's Evelyn Anderson. I'm from your Hi Evelyn, sorry about that. Sorry about that. No, that's okay, don't worry. Um hi, it was really just to make everybody aware that um during the COVID we've continued to deliver, you know, our valuable services throughout the community. Um we are we have moved premises and I'm not sure if everybody's aware of that either. Um, just now we are uh, due to COVID restrictions, we do um, see clients face to face, but only in emergencies. And we're using the near me platform as well, so that for people who have IT, we can actually see them in a face to face, although it be virtual or virtually. Um, as we're, we're trying to look at COVID, we've seen a massive increase in the amount of people within our local area looking for employment advice and housing issues. As well, has been really um, has come because of all the restrictions. Even things that you're talking about, like scaffolding, you know, things like people workers not being allowed to go into people's houses. Um, they're saying it's unsafe, so that's put a lot of landlords using excuses not to do repairs. You know, things like that. So we've seen massive uh, an increase in that, and we think that we've not even began to see the ripple effect from COVID. You know, and we're always looking at. We've got twenty projects just now that are externally funded. Um, and we're, we're looking to increase that because we think that employment um, is going to be a major um, topic as we move forward. Um, and it's just to let everybody know that we will um, continue to, you know, work with all the partners. You know, and anybody can contact us at any time. That's that's great. Thank you. Yeah, can I come in? Yep. Hi, Evelyn. Uh, just to ask you, where have you moved to? We've moved to um, Stirling Street. You know where the old um, Scottish Power building oh, was? In there? Upstairs. Okay. They're upstairs from um, Skills Development Scotland. Okay. Is there a lift there? There's, we, have, we don't have a lift, but we have interview rooms that are on the ground floor. Right. Okay. So it is, it is disabled, uh, you know, accessible. We do have that, and we also have, so we can't do home visits just now, but we do use the, the Near Me um, platform. You know, if someone's got IT, if they don't, when we can make arrangements, you know, some other way. And um, we're working with, third, you know, with third, with third parties and partner organisations that are able to go out and do home visits, and they can link up for us. Okay, thank you. Can't hear you. Councillor Beveridge, want to come in? Thanks. Yeah. I regard. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I regard what Nancy, Nancy, regarding Evelyn saying about the Citizens Advice Bureau, uh, Nancy, I know it's not in my ward, it's in Central Ward, but I would heartily recommend a visit to it. They're doing a, the, the, work, the work they're doing there is fantastic. It's a crank, it's got to be a cranking location. But Mark, can I go back, Michael, to the last update regarding the. The uh, Royal Sports Centre. Uh, what was it they were looking for there regarding the facilities up update? Was it in, was it 
outside facilities, as in pumping stations and that kind of stuff, or was it an in, inside uh, upgrade of the, the changing rooms? Because I don't think that we've called the last remit. Is, 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 but do you have that information? Thanks. I think the, the query was just regarding potential um, funding for the externals to the to the building council. That's the I think Brian Lafferty may wants to come in and give you more information on that. Okay, Brian, on you go. Oh, sorry, my my, my uh, reason for putting my hand up was to do with the housing thing that um, everyone was talking about. Um, so, no bother, Brian. No, it's just I'll, I'll just finish off what I was saying there. Sorry, Brian. Um, it's, it's regarding the outside council beverage. So we'll we'll get more information what the actual request was about, and we'll make sure that's fed back into the board. That's great, Mark. Because I've had lots of a couple of requests regarding the facilities there. I mean, there's a first class skating park that's need, it's needing refurbished, and and like so there's loads of room at the side for a pumping station, which they have in other areas of North Lanarkshire, especially Motherwell, which seems to be getting everything. But anyway, but it would be a first class place for like say one of the pumping stations down there at the side of Royal Yards, if that was uh, possible. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Councillor Beveridge. Um, Anything else from for Evelyn before we move on? Oh, sorry, Chair. I, I just wanted to, to give Evelyn some update on the, the information she was talking about in terms of landlords and saying they can't get repairs done because of COVID and tracing down houses. Yeah. So, um, the third housing property projects, we managed to do 142,000 repairs last year throughout COVID. That was ranging from gas servicing, which managed to contain, maintain, and also do emergencies. It was just a case of having the right processes in place and risk assessments and methods statements. And from the 6th to 26th of April, when the lockdown kind of relaxed a wee bit between July and Christmas, we went into phase four of the construction phase uh, process where we managed to get in and do some more day-to-day -day repairs and routine work. Um, that, that was a good thing. Then we locked down again in January and went again and moved back to emergency repair only. And then June 26th of April, we're now back at a full service. So Landlords should be allowing contractors in to do works and get works done, provided there be the right risk assessments and method statements in place. And I'm happy to, um, if there's any particular problems for anyone to contact me direct and I'll talk through any issues she's got and try and assist her. Thanks for that, Brian. A lot of the problems that we're having with disrepair are through private landlords. But that's what I'm referring to. They didn't yeah. can't get the work done. But um, if I can help in any way through, through the advice of how we go about it, then I'm happy to do that. That's great. Thanks for that, Brian. Okay, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Evelyn, for that. Um, if we can move on to point 11, input from community planning partners, can I take the police first? Is it clear it's on, yeah? It is. Good evening, everybody. And uh, Just a quick update from me um, in terms of what's been happening in the air drain of the villages. Um, I know that housebreaking is something that always features on this agenda, um, particularly in, in my update. Um, I can tell you for the last three months of this year, we've recorded six domestic house breakings across here during the villages, which um very low numbers um, and to be honest is very helpful for us. Of them, we already have one of them detected um, and we have potential uh, detections forthcoming for other crimes, um, given that we have seen a crime examination being carried out and there's potential from that. And also with the help of the community, I would have to say, um, we have CCTV images of persons responsible from ring doorbells and personal space CCTV and the like. So there's still a bit of work needing done round about them, um, but we are working away on that. Um, I know as well, fire raising is always something that um, is talked about in this forum. Um, we have had eight in total recorded in the last three months since our last meeting. Um, from that, a couple of grass fires, which had, the people responsible for them have been detected. Um, and we've also unfortunately had um, vehicles set in fire as well. Um, again, these inquiries are ongoing. The CID at Coke Bridge are running with these investigations and there are potential um, results forthcoming from them when we get scenes of crime examination determinations back to us. In general terms, um, I know I've spoke about it on numerous occasions, and it unfortunately is something that um, again keeps coming to the fore. Bogus crime. Um, I think with the what has happened over lockdown, people have been more inclined to go online to renew 
you know, articles for their house or to engage in other social media contact. Um, we have had a, quite a significant increase in fraudulent activity with online scams. I know that quite possibly um, some of you will have been targeted by these and also targeted by mobile phone scams. I know that myself the last week or so I've had lots of contact from um, people purporting to be from the Royal Mail wanting to offer me um, packages and different things. Um, so, you know, it is something that we are cited on, we're well aware of, and we'll continue to get that message out in social media um, to members of the community, just to raise their awareness and, and make sure that they are aware that these things remain ongoing. What we have encouraged as well from the officers within our safer communities as for the, the, the hard to reach groups, perhaps the elderly, who, who maybe don't use social media as a, a forum um, for reading about what's happening in the, the, the local community. Um, we're providing information to them through the pharmacies um, with leaflets and prescriptions, things like that, just to make them aware of you know, the bogus crimes that are ongoing, the scams that are ongoing, and for general personal safety advice and security for their homes as well. It's been successful in Cumbernauld and, and in Coat Bridge as well and across our subdivision. Um, we will continue to use that. Um, in terms of disorder and antisocial behaviour, um, I'm aware that um, in recent times, particularly I would say the last month, the Petersburg area has been quite a problem for us. Um, we've had a lot of antisocial calls up there. Um, there's been um, quite a significant amount of um, police activity up there as a result um, and we will continue to maintain focus in that area. Calder Crooks has been subject of discussion over the last couple of meetings and I know that I've had uh, contact with the local councillor up there um, just about ongoing issues in terms of children um, who are coming into the area from elsewhere children congregating, antisocial behaviour, disorder, um, things like that. As a result of focused activity um, over the last few weeks, on the 28th of May, we've had support as well from the um, Operational Support Division in terms of the, the Mounted branch. They've come out to, to assist with the antisocial uh, behaviour up there because a lot of the areas, um, say, quite simply for officers and foot are difficult to get to and for officers who are in marked police vehicles um, they're easily spotted coming into the area uh, but not only that they're not always easy for them to get onto the, the footpaths and things so we have had support from our uh, mounted branch police scotland mounted branch and we will continue to do so as we move into the kind of summer period with the schools being off and whatnot uh, but just to take you back on, on the 28th of may um, we had focused activity up in calder crooks and as a consequence, there have been nine parental alert letters sent out to the parents of the children involved up there to make them aware of what their children are becoming involved in. Um, it's not always that the parents are aware of what activities the children are becoming involved in. And quite clearly, um, we need to get that message back to, to parents to make them aware. Um, so those letters have been sent out. In terms of other incidents in the areas, um, Drugs offences being detected along with alcohol consumption in public, which unfortunately we are seeing an increase in as the, the restrictions ease across the, the division. Um, we are now engaging again, fortunately, in joint patrols with staff from North Lanarkshire Council and will continue to address antisocial behaviour, breach of COVID regulations and the like. Um, the, the joint visits that we have been participating in um, had ceased because of the, the COVID pandemic. However, they are now back up and running again, and there will be um, quite a significant increase in them over the next couple of months, as again, we see the, the restrictions beginning to ease. Um, you may be aware from social media um, and furtherance of the complaints across the, the subdivision, and particularly from the, the community in Airdrie, um, speeding has again been an issue that uh, people are complaining about to the police. We have had focused patrols and days of action across the the, the villages and in Airdrie itself, um, supported by officers from Lanarkshire's Road Policing Department. Consequently, we've identified various road traffic offences and we've engaged with drivers to educate them about particularly their speeding issues and speeding complaints coming from village to village and coming from the, 
the national speed limits down into the the more appropriate uh, speed limits for the the villages as they pass through. Um, I think that's probably all I would want to update you on at the moment. Um, however, finally, something that I do want to touch on are resourcing issues here for Airdrie. Uh, Ross Edgar, who has been the community policing sergeant here for the last three years, just over three years, Ross has moved on uh, to a promoted post in Hamilton, um, which he began on Monday of this week. Ross will be replaced by Sergeant Alan Hendry. Alan comes into post as of the 21st of June. Um, and he will take on the responsibilities that Ross has been having responsibility for for the last three years. Alan will make contact with you once he's in post, and I'll ensure that um, he's copied into the correspondence that I have for tonight. And just in terms of my own position, um, this will be my last community board meeting for Airdrie. I am unable to make the next one because I'm going to be on annual leave and I retire in October. So can I take the opportunity just to thank everybody for all your support that you've given to me, to the community policing team here at Airdrie and also to the response officers, uh, because without your support, we wouldn't be able to achieve some of the things that we have been able to do across Airdrie and the villages, certainly in the last three and a half years that I've been in post. Um, so thank you to the councillors, thanks to the community and if anybody does have any questions for me, I'm happy to take them. Okay, thank you, Claire. Um, firstly, thank you very much for all your input on the last previous times you've been here, and I'm sure you'll very much enjoy your retirement. Um, and well done. Um, I'm sure you'll thoroughly enjoy it. Um, but again, thank you from everyone and from the Air Community Board um, all around for all your support and help. Thank you, Chair. You're welcome. Michael, I've put Chair, my... uh, question. Michael, I put my like, councillor Ian McNeil. I've stuck my name in the yep. for a comment. A couple Carry of on, things. Uh, first of all, lucky you retiring. Uh, good luck to you, and uh, thanks for all your work and Airdrie during the time you've been with us. Uh, you mentioned resource. I would just like to ask you, Claire. On Saturday evening, there you were talking about uh, the problems we're having in Petersburg. I've been in contact via email. Matt's been kind enough that he's going to use the mobile CCTV that's at Petersburg shops to monitor uh, that particular Lynn car park where five cars were damaged and vandalised in there on Saturday night. And the response the residents got was it was going to be nine o'clock on Sunday night before anybody could go out to speak to them. I mean, when, when there's mass vandalism of cars, uh, there's drinking, all sorts of other things going on. You know, it is a bit disappointing that it takes 24 four hours before even a response can be made to it. And I, I mean, What's the situation with the resources near How many police do we have working in Airdrie these days? And I mean, it's, it, I just don't feel as if we've got enough police officers in Airdrie. It certainly, if I could just respond to your question, it certainly depends on week to week. Um, for the community policing team, they work a, a, a series of day shift, late shift uh, shifts. So one week they're day shift and they finish it about uh, four o'clock on a Friday, the following week they're late shift on Friday and Saturday night. Now, for the response police officers who are covering, there are five shifts to work from here. Jay, there's a sergeant and 10 work on each shift here. Um, they're augmented, obviously, by the officers at Cobridge as well, because they form part of the same kind of policing plan, if you like, for across the subdivision. The way that the calls are prioritised, that function is carried out by the area control room. The area control room will allocate resources to incidents depending on their priority. So if there's more prioritised calls, calls or you know calls of a higher priority are coming in, resources will be diverted to them. Unfortunately, what can happen at times is that officers may be coming out to deal with a particular incident. However, something else that uh, is most critical and time critical to be dealt with will come in and officers are di diverted to that. So it just depends what the, the kind of call volume is on the weekend and also what the priorities are that need resourced. The other things that we do have as well is that um, you know we, we have missing person inquiries, things like that to deal with. So it may well be the officers come in and if we have missing persons, they take priority because naturally we need to find them and establish that their wellbeing is is of paramount importance, obviously, and we need to you know, establish that they're safe and well. So it will also depend on what calls they have 
coming into when they start their shift. But the, the actual prioritising and resourcing of calls is conducted by the area control room. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Um, can I just move get three other people who want to come in? Um, Dennis O'Keefe, then Councillor Stocks, and then <laughs> Councillor Beveridge. Hi there, everyone. Um, it's just a wee bit of feedback from the minutes. I noticed that um, Claire had said the last time they were interested in, they were open to suggestions on how to get information out to our older residents. Um, and I know uh, a lot of the issues we've had has been digitally uh, engaging with ourselves. So we put a quarterly newsletter out, and during COVID, we've supplemented it with a mini monthly. And we always put something in about um, the latest scams, and we do that we usually go to Trading Standard Scotland. So we send out hard copies, so we know that at least um, several hundred older folk are getting the latest scams, if you like, and they can read it. They don't need access to the internet. That was all, really. Okay, thank you, Dennis, for that. That's very useful. Thank you. Um, Councillor Stocks, and then yes, Councillor Beveridge. Right, thanks, Chair. I just first of all want to wish Spectre McGugan all the best in the future, and to pass on my regards to Ross Edgar as well. Um, wish him all the best. Uh, I just wanted to, one thing I wanted to report, I don't like these things being turned into surgeries, but to make one point, uh, it's just come to my attention that I've had complaints about motorbikes at um, just off Common Side Street at Arm Drive. I don't know if anyone else, or, or, or more importantly, you've been aware of these these things, but uh, it was just to to make you aware if if you hadn't. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Stokes. Claire, do you want to pick in on that? Yeah, there, unfortunately, with the the. Lighter nights coming in, councillor. We have had quite a few complaints, not unique to Common Side Street, but elsewhere as well. Um, we have, in the past, carried out again focused activity around about that. We are struggling at the moment um, to have the the off road bikes deployed, but that is something that as we come into the summer time and with hopefully the resources available, we will be able to deploy the, the off road bikes again. We are looking at other alternatives as well for that. I know certainly that in South Lanarkshire they're using quad bikes, the officers down there, um, which was founded, uh, funded by the um, some of the, the kind of the groups that are set up by the farmers down there for rural crime. So that's something potentially that we could look at as well moving forward. But at the moment, um, what we have done is we've engaged with the North Lanarkshire Council's CCTV. And when we do have a report in of off-road bikes being used, we're asking our control room to immediately notify the CCTV operators in order that they can turn the cameras. We can obtain footage of the people who are responsible because if officers, if there's a delay in them getting there or if it's my CP that are going there either on cycle patrol or on foot and the people are no longer there, then at least we have the CCTV footage captured or the people captured on CCTV footage. We've got the images depicting who's responsible and then that way we can do retrospective inquiries in relation to it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Claire. We'll get two other Councillor Beveridge and Councillor McCoy. Councillor Beveridge first, and then Michael Coyle. Uh, thanks. Uh, I, 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 Claire, wish you well in your retirement. Uh, Thank you. The see that uh, you, you see you've pinpointed antisocial uh, problems in Petersburg. Is this because of people and residents phoning the one hundred and one and reporting that antisocial thing? Right, we are getting reports in through one hundred and one. Yes. Um, but also we're, we're getting reports in from elsewhere in the community, basically from community engagement. My guys from the CP being out there on patrol, um, people are speaking to them, giving them information. And, you know, I can only thank the public for doing that because without that information, we wouldn't be aware of what's going on. I understand we, we've had discussion about this before, Councillor Beveridge, about the issues that perhaps some of the, the community are experiencing and getting through to the police via 101 and sometimes there is delaying coming through on that. Um, but in the first instance, I would ask that people do continue to use 101. However, if it is an emergency, please encourage people to use Treble 9. Uh, can I just come back there, Claire? You know this is a bugbear of mine. The 101 service, I know it's nothing to do with you, the 101 service is absolutely diabolical. The, I've had lots and lots of residents in my area 
and through Airdrie contacting me because of my previous employment, which Councillor Coyle is well aware of, uh, as uh, and trying to contact the police and they can't get through in the 101 service. It's absolutely diabolical. I spoke to the superintendent, I can't remember his name, not a nice chap, who and, and another day at the surgery. I know it's not a day with you, Claire. However, uh, the, the, I feel I don't know what to do about this. Uh, the, the 101 service, the, the, the service that the, the public are getting is substandard when it comes to the tile and the police because it's just they're just not getting through clear. And I know it's not a respect in you. I know you know about it. You're fed up with me saying you about it, but it's just absolutely shocking. And I really do not know what to do about it. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Bevich. Claire, do you want to come in now or not? Or I come in, you... Michael. Yeah. Can I come in, Michael? Yes, carry on, Councillor uh, Coyle. Thanks very much, Chair. Uh, the only one solution that I can see here, clear, is to get Alan Beveridge's uniform dusted down and bring him back into the service again, because Airdrie and the villages have never been the same since that sort of policing and the cops had retired. But saying that, I'd just like to reiterate what Councillor McNeil said about what's happening up in Petersburg with Youth going, going, going down the glen, drinking, coming up, causing damage, urinating in people's places, taking off windows and that. Oh, you know, the simple fact is that this has not happened overnight. This has been happening for years and years and years. I'm quite sure that Councillor McNeil and me has been uh, challenging uh, Ross Edgar all the time with this, but nothing seems to be done. We've asked Matt Costello to see if we can get a CCTV camera. I think uh, I think Ian's already says that he's considering putting a mobile one in there, which I hope helps to alleviate the problems down there, because it's really getting out of control. And I wish you all the best, Claire, and I wish Ross said you all the best anyhow, but as I say, if you would consider bringing Alan Beveridge back again, that would be a wee bit of help. Thank you, Councillor Coyle. I don't know if anyone can hear me or not, but I think they were having a fat problem with network just now. I don't know if anyone's seen that or not. Mine's keeps going in now. Um, I've lost all the chat on the sidebar. Um, Matt, are you still on? Yeah, still here, chat. Yeah. yeah, OK. Um, I don't know if it's me or not, but I think I'm back on now. Um, thank you, Councillor Coyle. Claire, do you want to come back on that? Can you hear us, Claire? Or? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Um, certainly the, the incidents in Petersburn have unfortunately increased somewhat over the last wee while. I don't know whether that's as a result. I know we're having a, a lot of issues with youth disorder up there. Um, I know that there's been doors kicked into some of the flats. There's been the vandalism to the cars that's already been alluded to. Um, and that there have been quite a few issues up there in recent times. As we move into the lighter nights and you know, with the easing of restrictions, it is something that we have discussed at a local level, along with the, the, the our local area commander, Chief Inspector Gillespie. He's very keen that we have focused local plans um, in terms of policing to tackle these problems, and it is something that you will see taking place over the next few weeks. Okay, thank you, Claire. Um, anyone got any last? Points from Claire before we move on to the fire service. I'm just conscious of time. It's uh, going on to ten to eight, so I'm just conscious we want to get the fire service in. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Fire service next. Thank you. Hi. Thanks, Chair. Uh, just to introduce myself. My name's David Boyle. I'm station commander for Coat Bridge. I just recently took up post on the seventeenth of May. Previous to that, I was station commander for Bells Hill, so I was in the North Lanarkshire area. So I'm aware of the, the community boards, and before that, again, I worked as a watch commander within Coat Bridge. So I'm familiar with the area, and I'm looking forward to, to working with you all and coming to these meetings. Not that much that I want to chair them, not yet anyway, but um, looking forward to So I've got a report. I, I, I put it through Christine. I don't know if everybody's had a chance to have a look at it. I did see it coming through, um, David, yeah, but I've not had a quick look at it. So it. Yeah. I can just run over it then. So we've got we're training ongoing just now. 
Uh, obviously, with the COVID restrictions, we're still getting training, and my report's going to be from January, February, March, so quarter four of the previous financial year. So, in January, we were doing sewers and underground structures. We've got our modules online, and we also do practical training within the fire station. Incident command was in February. That's the the management of incidents when we're at fires or any other incidents that we attend, and then rural and wildfires in March. Um, Going down a wee bit, we've got accidental dwelling fires, which last year was pretty good. We only had four within the, the board area in the same quarter last year. This year we've had 10, but there's been a lot more people maybe working from home, being in the house, and maybe been in meetings or whatever, and left their dinner on, whatever it may be. But because 50% of these accidental dwelling fires were in the kitchen. So and that's the kitchen area of dwelling houses. It's a common theme throughout North Lanarkshire and Scotland, and we're hoping to work with our partners to identify and educate our, our uh, residents or highest at risk. We've got casualties from accidental dwelling fires, which I'm really pleased to see as we've had zero within that quarter. The previous quarter was two, and then two years ago we had seven. So we're definitely moving in the right direction. Deliberate, deliberate secondary fire, as my colleague from East Scotland uh, sort of highlighted there. We have had a wee sort of issue with secondary fires. What we call secondary fires is grass fires, rubbish fires, uh, and deliberate fire setting throughout North Lanarkshire. And also, we're working with our partners to, to raise awareness for the deliberate fire setting. We're looking to work with our partners in Police Scotland, with our campus police officers to get in to talk to the kids. We're trying our best to get through the, the the internet, the IT, through Teams meeting to talk to the kids as well. And we're, we're learning now that we're getting near to the end of the COVID restrictions for going into schools, just as they're going for our summer holidays. We've only got a small window to catch them. Um, there is a lot of tipping, fly tipping locations throughout North Lanarkshire. And we're trying to encourage our crews to report these locations through dump, dump, dumpers in Zero Waste Scotland, also through North Lanarkshire as well, with our partners. Fires in non domestic properties, it's going in the right direction again. It went from 2019, it was at seven, 2020, last year down to four, and this year we're down to two. So, non domestic property, commercial premises, hospitals, schools, pubs, and factories, anything that's not a dwelling house. And if there is any fires within these these premises, our enforcement teams will carry out post fire audits, and they'll try and ascertain if legislation has been correctly followed. Look at any emerging trends: is it equipment they're using? Is it processes? Is it training that's required? And also, if there's any criminal acts that have taken place, as well as is it again maybe a deliberate within a commercial property? Casualties from non fire emergencies, what we would call a special service. So we would attend an incident like an RTC flooding, uh, assist our partner agencies, again, an entry to the houses to, to help with people who may be fallen. Uh, and we work with our partners from Police Scotland and the Scottish Ambulance Service. Again, two years previous, we were sitting at six. The last quarter there, we were sitting at four. Unwanted fire alarms. This is one of our biggest sort of, incidents that we go to which is not really an incident, it's a false alarm, it's a fire alarm signal. And in the last quarter there, we, we attended 43. Again, trend-wise, it is going down the right way. However, we are sending a fire engine, sometimes two or three, to premises where people have maybe burnt their toast. So we're endangering people on the roads, because sometimes when people see fire engines, they, they get a bit jittery. So there is a, that higher risk of, a, of an accident when we're on route. Uh, we're also taking away a valuable resource from somebody that maybe have a house in their house, uh, a fire in their house, or within commercial premises. So we're looking to, to deal with the duty holders there to try and look at any issues. Is it maybe the position of a smoke alarm? Is it again training, or just the use within the building? So we try and look at that and try and reduce our instances of going to these incidents. Uh, community safety wise. Uh, our COVID safety measures has has now reduced significantly now, so we'll be able to carry out home fire safety visits to all 
of their community now. Before it was just were very high risk, but that's changed since the, the date of this report that I sent it, and it's only come in yesterday. And that means we can go out and visit anybody in the community that you think require a, a home fire safety visit. And I've got a wee advert just below on that that tells you about how to go about getting my free home fire safety visit. If you think anybody or if you know of anybody, has you got a smoke detector? They might not know what to do in the event of a fire. They're a smoker, they're a drinker, they maybe live alone, a chaotic lifestyle. Please get in touch. That's the people we want to get to. And, and that moves me on to further down is make the call. So we've got a campaign. It's a hard to appeal for our target, our, our target group is anybody over the age of 50, smoke and either have a mobility issue, live alone or use medical or oxygen. Because these people are at most risk of being in danger with, if there is a fire in the home. So we need to make sure we can protect these people. I put some useful links within the page and within the report as well. You can go to our home page. We've got our safety web page as well, where you can have a, a wee check in your own house as well, fire safety in the home. Make the call and also there's a wee link there for our whole time firefighter recruitment campaign, which is now going to be opened all the time. So if you know of anybody that wants to join the whole time, which is our full time fire service, if you please direct them to that My Job Scotland. It's open all the year round. We're currently advertising for retained firefighters as well, and that's for stations in shorts, cool size, and steps. Again, go into My Job Scotland if you know of anybody that's interested in joining the fire service. And I'd just like to thank Christine Boyle as well for distributing the literature regarding well, underrepresented under groups or ethnic minorities. Uh, but there's, there's engagement sessions with, with these minority groups just to let them know about the fire service and how they would be accepted in the fire service in case I've got any doubts. And just lastly as well, on Monday, consultations opened for the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service for our future vision of the service. Obviously, we've got changing demands now. We've got an aging population. We've got climate change, threat of terrorism. Obviously, austerity measures are hitting hard as well. Somebody mentioned it earlier before with the COVID, how that's going to affect our budgets as well. So there's a consultation. It's opened on Monday there. It'll finish six weeks, 18th of July. That'll finish. So please urge you to go into the website. It's on Twitter as well. If you look under the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service Twitter page, and there'll be links to that as well. And our consultation is open for six weeks. And that's me, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, David, for the update. Um, just before I go into questions, I do apologise. I'm having problems with the sidebar chat. Um, I've lost all the chat on it, so if anybody's written anything, I can't see it. Um, I do apologise. So if anyone's got any questions, I can see some people. Um, so if maybe Christy and Matt can help me out here. Um, it's a connection problem. That okay, keeps coming Councillor up. Beveridge, you'd like to come in, Chair? Yes. Okay. Thank, uh, thanks, David. Quick question. I read somewhere about there's an increase in cent there's, there's a centralis centralisation uh, uh, process going on in North Lanarkshire. I take it that will not affect the, the troops on the ground? No, not at all. With, with, uh, there's been out to consultation with uh, the South Lanarkshire and North, Lan North Lanarkshire Council. And what's going to happen is the North Lanarkshire Fire Service, the South Lanarkshire areas, basically they're going to amalgamate. And that's going to run in line with NHS, our partners in Police Scotland as well. So it's a Lanarkshire. And it's not going to affect anybody at the fire station. It's not going to affect delivery. Basically, the service we provide to our local communities, it won't affect that at all. Thanks, Councillor. OK, thank you. Anyone else? Maybe I've missed them if Matt or Christine can see anyone No, there's else. nothing else in the chat bar, Chair. No, okay. Um, any last minute before we move on? Thank you, David, for that update. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Um, point twelve. Any other competent business from anyone? Again, the pen just putting on the side bar. I can't see it. Sorry. No. Chair, Doctor Glenn Dr. has Glenn. a hand up. Okay, Doctor Glenn. Do you want Thank to you very much. Good evening, everyone. This is a plea. This is a plea to put your heads together and help us in this area where we have a core path which is in sadly in need of some major attention. I've tried so many potential sources of funding and of assistance over the last six months and longer to see if we can raise enough money to get the 
serious deficiencies to be good. And the, the monies are looking around £12,000. I'm sorry I haven't had a good horse yet. Maybe you have. If you have any bright ideas as to how we can raise as a community the £12,000 to get this core path, which links Calder Bank, Chapel Hall, Dubai, Cairn Hill, and Gart Lee into Airdrie, get it functioning so that people, when faced with wet weather, don't have either to wade through it to the ankles, get wellies, or avoid the path entirely. We are seeing more people walking than ever before, more people cycling than ever before. We don't want to lose these people. We don't want to disappoint them, because this is a way forward in getting them to take the green pill. And by Jove, the green pills required here, where we have some of the worst health statistics in Western Europe. There you are. That's my thought for the night. Please help us. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Anywhere else? Any other content business? No. Um, if I move to point thirteen, which is date and time of the next meeting. Um, Chair, before again, you, Chair, before you go, I could just give a, a brief comment back on Dr. Glenn's comments there, just yep. to say that the communities team are already in touch with Dr. Glenn, trying to identify any additional support that can be provided. We'll continue to provide that support to her in the, the organisation. Thank you very okay, much. thank you, Matt. And we Thanks, also Anne. are grateful to Matt on other occasions for his input to this, but it's now got to see that major surgery is required. Thank you. Great, thank you, Anne. Thanks, Matt. Um, just moved on to point 13, which is the date and time of the next meeting. Um, the plan here is for Thursday, the 2nd of September 2021, uh, 6.30 p.m. again. And lastly, just again to say thank you to everyone who's attended tonight and everyone's participation. And um, we'll hopefully we'll see you. Um, maybe not Claire, but Claire's going to be not available and then retiring. So good luck to that again, Claire. Um, and again, thank you to everyone for joining in tonight. Thank you. Could I just sorry? Could I just ask the date of the next meeting? Is it the second of September? Thursday, the second of September, six thirty p.m. Claire, leave all uniform and see if Alan Beveridge can get in there, will you? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no